Okay, so we got the rain. I'm just out here. It's about 34 degrees. It was 70 something the other day. But uh, of course, now we have the plastic on here. It's uh, going to get full of water. So just going through the old leaf blower. And I got a sump pump going, so I'm just, that seems to be a decent low spot. So I'm just blowing the water from uh, around the plastic over to the sump, getting it pumped out. It's supposed to be nice tomorrow. The weather just changes like crazy. Yeah, I think in a previous video I talked about all the rain we're going to have. Most of that's been taken out. And now we're going to be looking at uh, 80 degrees on Tuesday, which is awesome. So we're hoping we're going to be able to pour the uh, uh, slab here maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that, Tuesday. Hey, get ready to do the uh, radiant heat flooring. So you can see there in the back, I ran a 2x4 between the um, ramps on my trailer so I can um, run the hose, the pecs out and unroll it. You can't just lay this stuff out because it will uncoil. You'll never get down, it'll tangle up on you, it'll be a real mess. So if you can roll it, um, if you don't can't hook up a contraption like that or don't have a flat roller, you can um, have someone roll it out for you, but you have to do it in the direction that's wound up. You can't just pull it out or it'll get all sorts of messed up on you. This radiant floor is the last thing I need to put down. And then I need to put down my uh, runners for our screeding. So to do that, I'm going to run um, a board, 2x4 board, all the way across in six places, so every 10 feet. And then the uh, screed will slide along the top of that. So we'll level those boards out. And typically if you didn't have plastic, you would just spike it into the ground to hold it in place. But um, we don't have that option here because I want to put any holes in our plastic. So I'm going to create a, probably like a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of plywood with a nail sticking out of it. And then from that nail we'll go um, probably like a two by two maybe um, with a drill, hole drilled in the bottom so it can slide in and out easily. So as we have the runners going across and we pour concrete to that spot and we're done, we can just pull those up and then fill that hole in with concrete. It's just a small hole, it's not going to make much of a difference. And the nail and the uh, plywood will just stay on the bottom. And it's not going to hurt anything being down there. So I'll probably have to do for a 20 foot board, I'll probably go every five feet and put one of those in and then uh, hopefully it'll go smoothly. So I've never done a slab this big or this complex. So it'll be interesting to see if we screw it up or not. Um, you've probably seen this before. I've looked at anything in radiant flooring before. This is just a one inch conduit. The half inch tubing will slide right up through there. This is what will come up in our slab probably about right in there. This is the floor drain next to the furnace uh, clean out and the um, pipes will come up right about in there so I'm just gonna have all these together have them all probably just uh, taped together for now a bunch of tubes sticking out and we'll tape the ends of them so they don't get nasty okay we got three of the runs down the two that go along the outside garage area there's two loops there and then we got one loop it runs this front bedroom. Um, I made sure you want to have all your loops to be around the same length. So in my case, uh, these are 300 feet. If you're using a, a half inch line, um, 300 is, is about where you want to be. No more or no less than 250 and no more than uh, 350. 300 is the sweet spot. Um, you're supposed to be anywhere between 6 to 15 inches, I think, apart, but 9 and 12 is normal. So these are 12 inches apart because I did my rebar on 2 foot by 2 foot uh, squares. And so it's really easy to run the pipe up and down the uh, rebar that way. I don't know exactly how you would do 6 inches apart. You wouldn't be able to do a loop, a 6 inch loop because on half inch pecs, you can only bend it 10 inches before it will kink on you. So uh, 12 inches is ideal, in my opinion. I don't know, when I mean, you're doing it like this, if you're doing like a spiral, we're just going in a big circle, I suppose you could do them six inches. Or if your loops were to 
come out, do a big loop back around, and then do six and a big loop back around like that, I suppose that would work too. So over there is where all my pipes are going to come up at. Um, when I get all that done, I'll tape everything together and make it good and solid. The thing I messed up on is I bought a 1200 foot roll and then my runs are all approximately 300. They range between 3... Oh, what am I at? 307 and then I think my shortest is 395, 396, something like that. So the problem being is I can only get three runs because I have all that extra pipe. I've got probably an extra, I don't know, four feet or so on each side. So I got to add eight feet, ten feet to be safe on each run. So that means I'm going to be short. So if I were to try to do one extra run, I would be short right as it comes into the the uh, home run back, back right there. I would be uh, probably about 15 to 20 feet short. And then uh, that would suck because I do not want to splice this underneath and then hope that it holds. Um, I suppose you could. Maybe I'll do some research on that. But this pipe, the only difference between this and normal PEX is this has an oxygen barrier, meaning that it does not let um, oxygen into uh, the pipe as it's going through, so you don't get uh, oxidation on your equipment. So when this runs back to your boiler and everything, and you put your water in there, it's not going to continue to um, oxidize. So it's a special pipe made specifically for uh, radiant heat and heating systems. Now you can use it for normal piping as well, which we plan to do. So the extra that we have will just be used for normal piping. Um, the house is going off over there, so I plan on doing some sort of slab over there as well. So we'll have some extra runs to do on that one. And then I'll be sure to make my runs about 280 feet versus 300 feet so I don't have this extra couple hundred feet of pecs laying around. But I'm sure we'll use it somewhere. We've got a lot of water lines and things to run. And I suppose for the garden, um, when we get that run, we can use these for uh, watering pipes for the gardens too. So there's lots of stuff we can use it for. I think it ran about... Oh, about 300, I think, for a 1,200 foot roll, if I remember right. So we've got two more runs to do. One that comes down here through the entryway, wraps down. The other one comes along the backside, catches the bathroom, laundry room, and then kitchen, dining room area.
finished up the rest of the radiant uh, tubing for the floor. Uh, tomorrow I gotta pressure test it. Sorry, the, sorry for the wind noise. I'm telling you, I need to get a windmill out here. So the gap I'm walking through right now, I'll turn around here in a second. That's where the kitchen cabinets are in the refrigerator. Um, they suggest not putting radiant heat underneath your cabinets if in case you store any food or things like that in there. Um, it could possibly make them warmer than they would need to be and could possibly rot faster on you and under the fridge so it doesn't get too hot, things like that. Um, this gap right here is where the hot water heater and the uh, furnace sits. And this gap right here is really nothing. There's a wall over here, uh, which of course you don't want to nail through into a wall. So that's why I left the gap there. So the layout looks strange, like right in front of me, how it zigzags back and forth. But just on this side, there's a wall that runs down. So I didn't want to risk puncturing it. You know, right here, there's a wall that runs right here, so I have no pipe going underneath that wall. Same thing right here, there's a wall that runs through just like that. So when I did my layout, I tried to avoid anywhere where there would be potential to drive a nail or a tap con down and then potentially um, uh, break my hose by accident. So the wall does actually run across these, but all I've got to do is um, uh, to make sure I don't put a nail within three or four feet of the wall. And I'll have my notes there when I'm putting that down. But beyond that, it's pretty much done. Uh, one of my uh, cleaners who was supposed to, well, she wasn't supposed to be out here, but one of the other people we work with was gonna come out and help pour the concrete. But she's been sick for a few weeks and failed to tell anyone about it. Now she's getting tested for the uh, COVID-19 virus and haven't gotten results back on that yet. But she went around and was with other people, came into our office, dropped off her time card, drove in one of our other workers' trucks who was supposed to be out here helping us. He didn't know anything about it. Went and drove around with my other worker. So yeah, so now we're all just kind of hoping no one's gonna get sick she's been sick and has a fever and we haven't got her results back yet so because of that i pretty much have lost all my help so i'm hiring out a um, concrete company to come and just do the pour i've got pretty much everything set up for them i need to talk to them because i have not done the runners um, for the screed board they may be more professional than i am and know how to get around that. So um, these are the boards I was going to put down. So I'll have to give him a call and see if that's going to be an issue with them or not. But still cloudy today. I did do a time lapse of us finishing up. Um, it would be pretty funny because I screwed up probably five or six times because my head's just not in it today. I'm too busy complaining about the whole worker getting sick and not telling everyone and just other BS that goes on in our daily lives of running a business. So I think I screwed up over there, screwed up over there, screwed up over here, screwed up over there. And a couple of times we had to go back and, and cut off a whole bunch of, of the uh, tubing and then put it back down again. So anyways, another day and a half, this will be poured, finally. There's a view from the other side of the uh, farm. You can see my bees flying past me. But eventually this out here will all be a pond. So there are several natural springs I run through here. Um, there's a tree row right there that goes all the way out into the field. You can follow that clear up to almost the very end and there's running water and it comes all the way down through these trees. This area in front of me that's really green is actually extremely wet. I've gotten stuck in there a couple times and um, just always flowing water. It never seems to stop. Up by the shed there's another one that just flows non-stop. So this pond will never be out of um, out of water. It's just it's always got water flowing. But 
there's our house view from a distance. So the plan, all the bees are just flying right past me here. My beehive's right behind me. So this road that we put in is just kind of temporary. Um, the dam, we originally thought it was going to go over the top of this existing road here. Um, but I think we're going to push it into the trees so we can keep using this road and then uh, build the dam up. And then when we're ready, um, plug the dam. Or when we're ready, we'll go ahead and start taking the rock off this road and dig it out. And then um, start using the, uh, the dam that we built. So I hope that will be a winter project this year. But also once the uh, farm uh, barn is built, you can see the framing way up there just to the right of the shed. And the house will be just to the right of my pile of dirt there where all those rocks are at. That's where the house will be. So that's also a winter project. But when the weather is bad and I can't work on that, I can definitely get in the uh, equipment and come out here and start digging this out. But back over there is my bees. So I got some other videos on those if you want to check those out. It's very peaceful out here right now. Springtime, the birds are chirping, the bees are flying. I found several wild cherry trees that are in bloom right now and they smell really good. So. Thanks to uh, coronavirus, no one's on the road, so there's no road noise right now. It's pretty nice. <laughs>